My dear students, let me welcome you all to a new edition of physics. In this edition, we we'll learn about types of spectra, absorption spectra and emission spectra. Also, we we'll learn how to produce X-rays, uses of X-rays and properties of X-rays. So let's get started. Atomic spectra and X-rays. Talking about types of spectra. We've got two types of spectra. Visible, visible spectra and invisible spectra. Talking about visible spectra, it includes absorption spectra. We call it dark line spectra and emission spectra which includes two types also bright line spectra and continuous spectrum types of spectra as i said includes visible and invisible spectra invisible includes ultraviolet and infrared we'll take each one of them okay We'll study visible spectra, of course. So we'll be able to learn about continuous spectrum, line spectrum, and absorption spectrum. Emission spectra. OK. Emission spectra are produced when atoms, when electrons in atoms fall, relax from higher energy levels, to lower energy levels. So once again, emission spectra are produced when electrons fall from higher energy levels to lower ones. Okay, and according to the principle of conservation of energy, yes, energy are released in form of photons having, yes, certain frequencies. Okay, we've got, as I said, Continuous spectrum, it is an emission spectrum. Okay, what about it? Definition of continuous spectrum. It is the spectrum which contains wide range of frequencies. What does it mean contains wide range of frequencies? It contains many frequencies. Okay. In a continuous spectrum, the colors gradually change from one color to the next. The color changes gradually from one color to the next. Examples for continuous spectrum. Yes, the spectrum given out by a glowing hot solid, a glowing hot solid object, for example, incandescent filament of a lamp. So incandescent filament of a lamp is an example of continuous spectrum. In this case, the glowing object is a solid object. So the spectrum is a continuous. It includes wide range of frequencies. And it's not characteristic of the element emerging it, emitting it, okay? And now talking about bright line spectrum, the spectrum which is characteristic of the element which emits it, okay? What about the definition of the line spectrum? It is the spectrum which consists of a number of colored narrow bright lines. So it is the spectrum which consists of a number of colored narrow bright lines with wavelengths characteristics characteristic of the element which emits light against a dark background. Okay. 
Bright line spectrum, this is a major difference between continuous spectrum and bright line spectrum. Bright line spectrum is given out by a glowing gas or a glowing vapor. Okay. Note, we've got something here to mention. Each gas has its own Yes, bright line spectrum. Yes, each gas has its own characteristic spectrum. Flame tests, the tests you perform in chemistry, yes, for certain solids, are examples of bright line spectrum. Okay, I mentioned solids, but I have to mention something here. The solid in the flame vaporizes, so it changes into a vapor. Okay, so once again, flame tests for certain solids are examples of bright line spectrum, as in a flame test, because in a flame test, the solid material vaporizes. As I said, bright line spectra are the fingerprints of the atoms. They are characteristics they are characteristic of the atoms emitting them. And now, talking about absorption spectrum. We'll start with the definition of this spectrum. And your attention, please. It will be exactly the opposite of the line spectrum. That's why we call it dark line spectrum. And we've got bright line spectrum. Dark line spectrum is absorption spectrum. It is the spectrum which consists of dark lines indicating the absence of certain wavelengths of light against dark lines against colored background. Usually the colored background is, yes, is of the continuous spectrum. Absorption spectrum is produced when a gas or vaporized element is exposed to a continuous spectrum, continuous spectrum such as white light. Examples for absorption Fraunhofer dark lines, which appear in the solar spectrum. Fraunhofer dark lines are considered as yes dark lines, so absorption spectrum. We've got a question, give reason. Hundreds of dark lines appear in the sun's spectrum, in the solar spectrum. Hundreds of dark lines appear in the sun's spectrum. By the way, we call them Fraunhofer dark lines. They appear due to the presence of they appear due to the presence of certain elements in the atmosphere of the sun. So in the atmosphere of the sun there are certain elements and they are yes in the vaporized form because of the heat of the sun. So once again they appear due to the presence of certain elements in the atmosphere of the sun. These elements are in vaporized form and each element, each one of them, absorbs its own characteristic wavelengths. Accordingly, dark lines appear. And now, talking about X-rays. X-rays are invisible electromagnetic waves of short wavelengths. Wavelengths range from 10 to the power of negative 13 meter to 10 to the power of negative 8 meter. So X-rays are invisible electromagnetic waves. And they've got short wavelengths. They've got high frequencies. So they've got high penetration power. They lie in the region between gamma rays 
and ultraviolet. Gamma rays, yes, have frequencies higher than X-rays, but ultraviolet have frequencies less than X-rays. And now talking about, yes, college tube. It is shown in front of you. Okay, so we've got an accelerating voltage here. And we've got a cathode that contains a tungst tungsten tube. And we've got in this tube, we've, uh, the anode is a copper rod. And we've got a cathode, as, said, as I said, we've got a cathode, which uh, the function of that cathode is to emit electrons. Okay? And of course, a great amount of it is produced while, yes, the generation of X-rays. So we need to get rid of the heat produced. So we've got cooling fins. So once again, talking about college tube. The previous diagram shows a modern X-ray tube. This type of tube was devised by college in 1913. In the tube, electrons are given off from the cathode by thermionic emission. So we've got a cathode. When current flows through it, it heats up and emits electrons. So electrons are given off from the cathode by thermionic emission. Electrons are accelerated by a large potential difference, okay, these electrons collides with a target made of tungsten or molybdenum target embedded in, into the copper anode. The anode gets very hot and is therefore made of solid copper. Once again, the anode gets very hot and is therefore made of solid copper, copper because it is good conductor of heat to conduct heat to the cooling fins. Yes, outside the tube. And fitted with a cooling fins, that's to say the anode has to be cooled to prevent its damage. And now talking about X-ray spectra. The X-ray spectrum consists of two parts. A continuous spectrum. It contains every wavelength. It contains every wavelength within a certain range. This spectrum is due to the radiation emitted as the Colliding electrons, bombarding electrons, we call it thermionic electrons, are decelerated, are slowed down by the retarding fields produced by the electrons of the target and by collisions. Hence, electromagnetic radiation is released according to Maxwell, yes, Maxwell's uh, Hertz theory. This radiation is continuous and is called the soft spectrum or the breaking spectrum. The breaking effect of the surrounding electrons gives rise to electromagnetic radiations, which covers a wide range of wavelengths. Let me say it again. The breaking effect of the surrounding electrons gives rise to electromagnetic radiations which covers a wide range of wavelengths. The second type of the X-ray spectrum is the line spectrum, X-ray line spectrum. The peaks, the spikes on the spectrum are 
characteristic of the material of the target. And these are the line spectrum. The line spectrum is produced when electrons from the inner shells, inner energy levels are removed. When electrons in the inner energy levels are removed completely by the bombarding electrons. Then an electron from an outer energy level falls to fill the vacancy, the hole emitting when it falls it emits a photon of definite wavelengths. Okay, frequency, energy of the emitted photon is given from the relation H nu. And of course, nu is equal to, yes, C over lambda. And thus given sharp line on the spectrum. We've got important notes here, the intensity of the X-ray, intensity of the X-ray beam depends on the number of electrons striking the target per second. Intensity of the X-ray depends on the, yes, number of electrons striking the target per second. And this is controlled by the cathode heater current, the current which flows through the filament. The penetration power, we call it hardness of X-rays, depends on the accelerating voltage. Also, the process in which X-ray is produced is the reverse of the photoelectric effect. In photoelectric effect, in photoelectricity, a photon ejects an electron from a metal target. Okay, but in X-ray production, electrons fall and then photons are produced. So it is the reverse. The process in which X-ray is produced is the reverse of the photoelectric effect. Here in this process, when X-ray is produced, production of X-rays, an electron produces a photon by striking a metal target. In photoelectricity, what happens? Light falls on the material and electrons are, yes, produced. It is exactly the opposite. Applications of X-rays. X-rays are used in studying the structure of some materials. X-rays are used in studying the structure of some materials because, and this is very important piece of in information, because the spaces between atoms between the atoms and crystals are ideal for X-ray diffraction. So interference patterns are produced revealing the structure of the crystal. So once again, the spaces between the atoms and crystals are ideal for X-ray diffraction. So interference patterns are produced. These patterns reveal the structure of the crystal. Also X-rays are used to check defects in metallic structures. X-rays are used to check defects in metallic structures and metal casting because X-rays have high penetration powers. X-rays Yes, are used in detecting fractures and cavities in bones, a broken bone or a tooth cavity. Let me say it again. X-rays are used in detecting fractures and cavities in bones, a broken bone or a tooth cavity. And now talking 
about properties of X-rays. They are not deflected by electric and magnetic fields. So, talking about the properties of X-rays, they aren't charged, they are electromagnetic waves, so they aren't deflected by electric and magnetic fields. They are highly penetrating. They are highly penetrating and can pass through many solids which are opaque to ordinary light such as wood and flesh. So they are highly penetrating. They have, yes, high penetration power or penetrating power. They cause fluorescence when fall on some materials, the materials glow. They cause photoelectric effect, of course, and Compton effect. They ionize gases. They are propagated in straight lines with the speed, with the velocity of light speed of light in space is equal to 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. X-rays consist of electromagnetic waves of very short wavelengths. Very short wavelengths that show, X-rays show, reflection, diffraction and interference. And these are the wave nature of X-rays. And now, we'll try to answer some questions. First, give reason, X-rays have valuable engineering uses. Let me say it again. X-rays have valuable engineering uses. X-rays may be used to check defects in metal casting and crystal analysis. So X-rays may be used to check defects in metal casting and crystal analysis. X-rays are used in studying the structure of some materials, give reasons. And it is very important give reason. Let me say it again. X-rays are used in studying the structure of some materials. In analyzing the structure of crystals. Yes, because the spaces between the atoms in crystals, spaces between the atoms in crystals are ideal for X ray diffraction. So, what happens? Interference patterns are produced. Interference pattern, interference pattern reveals the structure of the crystal. Another give reason, X-rays have valuable medical uses, okay, because X-rays are used in two main areas. They are used in two main areas. In diagnostic areas, in the detection of a broken bone or a tooth cavity. Also in therapeutic areas as in the treatment of malignant cancers. And now we've got another question. Distinguish between the line spectrum and the continuous spectrum Line spectrum and continuous spectrum of X-ray. Okay, we want you to differentiate, to make a comparison between X-ray line spectrum and X-ray continuous spectrum. Line spectrum is produced when the bombarding electrons have enough energy to remove electrons from the inner 
most shells of the atom, atoms of the target. Then electrons from outer higher energy levels drop to fill the holes, producing a set of distinct frequencies. These frequencies characteristic of the yes of the target element of the target. This was about the production of X-ray line spectrum. What about the continuous spectrum? Okay, how is it produced? X-ray continuous spectrum is produced because the bombarding electrons are slowed down. Slowed down by colliding with the atoms of the target and by the retarding fields produced by the electrons of the target's material. The rapid deceleration of the thermionic electrons, rapid deceleration of the thermionic electrons, produces a wide range of frequencies. Another point of difference, X-ray line spectrum is characteristic of the element of the target. X-ray continuous spectrum is independent of the kind of the material of the target. So one of them is characteristic of the material of the target, which is, yes, line spectrum but the continuance is not characteristic. The wavelengths of the line spectrum do not change when the accelerating voltage is increased. Okay, and what about X-ray continuous spectrum? The peak wavelength Peak wavelength is the wavelength at which the intensity is a maximum decreases when the accelerating voltage is increased. The photons of the line spectrum have energies equal to, so if we want to calculate the energy of a photon, yes, in the line spectrum. They have energies equal to the difference in energy of the higher energy level and the energy level where the hole exists. So the formula, the energy equals E2 minus E1, which is equal to H nu, and nu, of course, is equal to C over lambda. C is the speed of light in space, 3 times 10 to the power of 8. Lambda is the wavelength. So this is the formula that determines the energy and, of course, the wavelength of the photons of the X-ray line, line spectrum. Photons of X-ray continuous spectrum are the energies that the bombarding electrons lose either by colliding with atoms of the target or by the retarding electric fields of the electrons of the target's atom. In this way, we've come to the end of this edition. Until we meet again, my best wishes to you all. Thank you very much.